In this module, we're going to learn about a very useful decomposition that any pure state can be written in. It's called the Schmidt decomposition. One of the things that this decomposition is useful for is that it helps us, actually it lets us immediately determine whether a pure state, pure bipartite state, is entangled or not. Let's look at a few states that you've seen before. So the first simple example would be, let's say, 0 tensor 0. Is this an entangled state or not? It's not. It's a product state, right? You've seen that before. Let's take another example. Let's take 1 by root 2 times 0 on A, 0 on B, plus 1 on A, 1 on B. Is this entangled or not? Yes, this is an entangled state. It's the EPR pair. We've seen it before. Yes. Let's do a third example. 1 by root 2, 0 on A, 0 on B, plus 0 on A, 1 on B. Is this entangled or not? Or maybe you've seen it before, and the answer is no, this is not an entangled state, even though it looks very similar to the state that I wrote just above. So maybe you probably answered that question correctly, but maybe it also took you a second to answer it. Because that state is not written in such a nice format as the other two that I gave you before. The reason it's not an entangled state, it's actually a product state, is that it factors. You can rewrite this as simply 0 for A tensored 0 plus 1 for B, which is just the plus state. And that's not an entangled state. And so the difference in between these two states here is that the first one I gave you in a form that couldn't be, could not be factored, and the second one could be factored. In particular, you see the reason it could be factored is that the states that I used here on the A system, I used twice the same state. Whereas here, these two states are different. They're orthogonal. They form a basis of the A system. So it would be very convenient if all our pure states were always given in the form of this state here where we have a basis for A and we have a basis for B, and in this way we'd immediately know that there's no trick, the state cannot be factored, if there's more than one term, it's an entangled state. So that's exactly what the Schmidt decomposition is going to do for us. So let's see how it looks like. So here's the theorem. The Schmidt decomposition state says that if you take any pure bipartite state, psi AB, then this state can be written in the following form, psi AB, equals to the sum over i of lambda i, ui a tensored vi. This index i here is going to range from 1 to the minimum of the dimension of the a system and the dimension of the b system. So what are these lambdas, u's and v's? So first of all, uh, the u vectors, ui on a system and vi on the b system, these are an orthonormal set of vectors. Each of one is a basis, and they're called the Schmidt vectors. And then the lambda i, these are called the Schmidt coefficients. They're non-negative, and they sum to 1. The sum of their squares is equal to 1. This is to make sure that the state psi is a well-normalized state. So that's what the Schmidt decomposition says. It says for any pure state, there always exists a basis for the A system, ui, a basis for the B system, Vi, and some non-negative coefficients, lambda i, such that the state psi can be written as the sum of the lambda i, ui, tensor Vi. Why is this true? It's not hard to check, so let's uh, see a brief proof of that statement. So let me take a general state psi AB. I can always write it using now not necessarily the Schmidt basis, but arbitrary bases, in that case, I would be able to write it as the sum over i and j of some coefficients cij, i on Alice, tensored j on Bob. And see that we're not quite there yet, right? The difference between what I just wrote and our target, Schmidt decomposition, is that I have a sum over two indices here, i ranging from 1 to the dimension of a, and j ranging from 1 to the dimension of b. Now, we can look at these coefficients as a matrix. I can think, introduce a matrix C, 
which is the matrix with coefficients c, i, j. And if we're given a matrix, what do we want to do? We want to write it in a convenient form, and a convenient form is given by the single value decomposition. So let's apply the SVD to this matrix C. We can always write it in a form sum over another index K of some coefficients, let's call them alpha K, vectors UK and VK. Any matrix I can write in this form where U is a basis for the system A and B, V is a basis for the system V. That's the singular value decomposition. Now the coefficients C, I, J, they were the coefficients of the matrix C in the standard basis. So how do I recover them? C, I, J is equal to the I, J coefficient of the matrix C by definition. And now using my new form there, I can write it as the sum over K, alpha K, I, U, K, V, K, J. So if I plug in this new expression for the coefficients back into my formula for the state psi, what do I get? I get the sum over ij of cij, and cij I'll re-express using the formula that I got. And you can verify that then uh, the decomposition I can rewrite as sum over k of alpha k, and then I would get sum over i of i uk i tensored sum over j vk j j in the B system. What is this? It's just the sum over k of alpha k, what is the first term here, that's just exactly the vector uk. The second term, it's a bit different because we have uh, the inner product taken in the opposite direction, so I have to take a complex conjugate, and this will be the complex conjugate of the vector vk. Call it vk star. And here I am. This is almost my Schmidt decomposition. I have a basis on the A system, a basis on the B system, a single index k, and some coefficients alpha k. Now these coefficients alpha k are the eigenvalues of the matrix C. In general, they're complex numbers, whereas I would like my Schmidt coefficients to be non-negative numbers. But there's a simple trick uh, to get around this. Instead of writing the alpha k, which are complex numbers, I can write their absolute value. And here I can write what the phase was and call this vector, the Schmidt vector for the A system, and this the Schmidt vector for the B system, if the UKs were the basis, the E, I, theta, Ks are also a basis. It doesn't make uh, any difference. So there we are. We've written the state Psi in a form that exactly gives us the Schmidt decomposition. So why is this decomposition interesting? We have a canonical form for every pure state of a bipartite system A and B, and there's a lot of interesting things that we can read off about the state from the Schmidt decomposition. The first thing that can, we can read of it, and which was our initial target, is determine whether the state is entangled or not. So associated to the Schmidt decomposition, we can have, there's a number that's called the Schmidt rank, and the Schmidt rank is simply defined as the rank of this decomposition, which is the number of indices i such that the coefficient lambda i is not zero. And so if the Schmidt rank of a state is equal to one, it means there's only one term in this decomposition, the state is a product state. Whereas if the Schmidt rank is larger than one, then we have a state that's not a product state and we have an entangled state. And in a certain way, the higher the Schmidt rank, the more the entanglement. This is one way that one could quantify entanglement. There's other ways that we'll see later in the course, but these will always be computed from the Schmidt coefficients. Because you can see that there's one more thing that is interesting that we can see from this decomposition is that it splits the information about the state into three parts. There's a basis for the A system, a basis for the B system, and some coefficients that link these bases together. And so we have, in a way, some local data, which are the Schmidt bases, these vectors ui and the vectors vi. These are called local data because you can change them by acting only locally. If I apply unitary on the system A, this is going to map the UI basis to another basis, but it's not going to affect the Schmidt coefficients, and it's not going to affect the basis on the B system either. Similarly, I could apply a basis on B. And then we have these Schmidt coefficients, and these Schmidt coefficients cannot be changed by acting locally. Locally, we'll only be mapping 
the basis to another basis. So these we can think of as being global data. Now the last thing that I want uh, to point out is that this decomposition makes it very easy for us to compute the reduced density of the state Psi on the system A or on the system B. How would we do that? Let's do it for the system A. We have to choose a basis in which to measure B. What basis are we going to choose? Well, the VIs, right? And in that case, now I'm sure you can do the computation in your head. The reduced density of the state for Alice will be the sum over all i of the probability that we obtain the outcome VI. This is going to be lambda i careful squared, right? Always the norm squared of the associated vector times the post measurement state which will just be ui. And if I compute the reduced density on b, then I will get the sum over i of lambda i squared vi. So here there's two interesting things. One is that the two reduced density matrices here have the same lambda i squared as their singular values, right? So this is the SVD for ho a because the uis are a basis. This is the SVD for ho b because the vi is a basis. These lambda i squareds are the singular values. And so you, say, you see that if you take a pure state, its reduced density matrices on either system always have the same spectrum. They have the same singular values. That's an interesting fact that we wouldn't have known before we started writing the Schmidt decomposition. Another interesting consequence is that we can determine the Schmidt coefficients and the Schmidt basis that's associated to the A system simply by performing the singular value decomposition of the reduced density on A. Similarly, we can infer again the Schmidt coefficients and the Schmidt basis for B by doing the singular value decomposition of the reduced density on the B system. This gives us a procedure that given any pure state, given in a complicated form, lets us compute its Schmidt decomposition. We would compute the reduced density matrices, do the SVD, infer the Schmidt basis for e, A and B, and as well as the Schmidt coefficients, and put them together to get the Schmidt decomposition of our state.